Hi, this is Matt from AppWorks, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an improved method for exporting data from FileMaker. We have another video on this subject that talks about the foundations of how to do this one. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some more detailed reasons on why you would do it and some of the really cool things you can get by using this method. What is this method? It is using um, the export field contents rather than export records command from FileMaker. So the export field contents, um, maybe you've used that in the past to export something like a container field, but it also can export any block of text. So in this method, we're taking um, a looping script and we're grabbing a bunch of record data per line so using some sort of a, uh, a delimiter in between, such as in this case, the tab character and then a return character for each line, and then taking that entire big block of text, sticking it into a global field and exporting that global field to disk. That's really the technique right there. Because you're doing it this way, all of the work can be done in a script and you get all this power in this line right here. This is what you get when you control your export line. So in the previous video where I talk about how this works, um, I go through the uh, improved export one and two scripts here. This one, we're going to be looking at three and four. So we set up our header, um, and that's where we can use a custom header without having to do anything in schema for what it's going to look like. Let's run this one and kind of see what we get. So I'll run it in debugger so we can kind of look at it line by line. It runs our header and it makes uh, our first line. And then as it goes through for each line, it uh, concatenate, concatenates um, the extra string together, and then this is the whole thing. Let's run this all the way to the end. And look at the file on disk. I'll close out my data viewer and debugger. And I will open up that file in Excel. And take a look at what it gets. So this is it right here. So this is a text file with a custom header and also custom data because I'm using a calculation and not schema to determine how many line items this invoice has. Where can we go from here? Let's take a look next. A few cool things I definitely want to show you. One, as we iterate this script, um, I want to be able to kind of do coding on it and test it as it's running. And you can do that if you, if you have a, a subscript inside of your loop that calculates your line item. Let's run this one and talk about what's different about it. So this one has some of the same stuff. It uses a delimiter. This one's different though, because it actually sorts our records by date. And that's gonna come into play in a little bit, but first I'll go through the other part. It sets our export line. In this case, because I'm using a subscript, I'm using a global variable. So all the variables are dollar dollar. And it's using that same kind of a line as we saw before. Um, so I'm looking at the invoice ID, customer description, et cetera. Okay, then it's going to determine whether this is the first record for the month. Uh, like I said, I'll get to that in a little bit. And then it runs this, this um, second script here and sets individual variables for all the fields. And I can take a look and see what they are. And I can see at a glance that I have a bug in my script. I don't have my item count set correctly. Here's why this method is really cool. I can go into my script, move my debugger out of the way, correct my code uh, by putting in what I want this to be, which is the count of the invoice line items. And then when this subscript is finished running, now I can actually save my subscript, close it, and in the next iteration through, it'll run with a new code. So you can see I've got my fixed code. I use this all the time when I do a looping script because it allows you to kind of keep iterating as your script runs. Um, for example, let's say I want to make another change. In addition to showing the company name, I also want to put the contact name. So same idea. I can just kind of on the second iteration say, oh yeah, I want the invoice company uh, and also um, like an M dash and the invoice customer, um, I think that might be more distantly related. Uh, maybe the address would be a good example. So I'll grab the address line one, or the city would, would be fine. Oh, and it tells me I've got an error. That's because I forgot an ampersand right here. 
Okay, so I'll let this get through. And now I can save my subscript again. Command S, close that line. And let's talk about the second part of it now. So what happens is, take a look at all these invoices. These are all for January, and then I've got some February, and then uh, March, etc. So what, what happens in, in my uh, code, and I'm going to take a look right now in my debugger, or my data viewer, at my uh, export line, is I've actually got a header line that says invoices for month January 2020. And, and what's going to happen is, as I flip through my code here, it's going to say when it gets down to this next line, uh, when it gets to this next invoice, that one is still January. But the next one, this kind of this line of code right here will say the previous invoices month does not match the current invoices month. So it's going to calculate a, a break line. And let's take a look at what that code is for a second here. It says, use the list function, which is uh, how you concatenate things together. So it, it uses the whole entire export I've already calculated and stored, and then it puts an extra hard return, and then says, oh, this is the invoices for month February and 2020. I didn't make any changes, so I'll just close that. And then I'll um, let this run. So let's actually go for broke and let this go all the way to the end. And to do that, we close debugger and that will go all the way to the end and now I've got a file on disk you know it might not have overwritten my previous one nope it looks like it did so this is the result that I get a I get a custom header which is awesome um, B I get a sub summary line without having to do any kind of a sub summary part or any other tricky thing um, and that's really powerful. And also, I get, uh, without having a calculated field, I can get the company name and the city. So calculations that don't have to exist anywhere except in the script. And it's very superior to modify and track them um, in your script. So that is my preferred method for doing exports, which we use on most of our projects, I would say, at AppWorks. Thanks very much for your time, and have a great day.